Okay, well, welcome. Uh, my name is Daniel Magnuson. I'm going to be presenting on uh, Brain Pop today. This is a, a program uh, that uses an amazingly high number of videos. I mean, there's just so many videos on every topic in history that you can imagine. But um, typically, in a traditional classroom setting, we've been just showing the videos uh, to, to augment the curriculum, but in a distance learning format, there are uh, numerous um, extension response activities built into BrainPop. And one of the cool features about this is that many of these activities are writable. So you can just click on the worksheet and write right on the worksheet. And the tricky part is just how to take it from online where you have your responses and turning it into a PDF that you could actually then just attach to Google Classroom. So that's really the purpose of this video is showing what BrainPop looks like and how to navigate the different activities and how to actually turn them into uh, PDFs that can be turned in through Google Classroom. So that's the purpose today. So let's go through that. And I, um, like my previous videos, I've just been kind of starting from how to log in through Clever. So that's where we'll begin. And again, I'm going to really try to move as quickly as I can because there's a ton of it, uh, information that I'm going to be presenting. So as I go forward, I'm going to be moving pretty quick. Um, but the great thing about video is that you can always uh, go back and rewatch if you if there are parts that you missed. Okay, so uh, we're going to continue it then. So the next slide um, is just about logging in through Clever. So you just want to click on a login with Active Directory and just make sure it says Minneapolis Public Schools. Uh, you'll it'll open up to um, a login screen that looks like this. Uh, you just want to make sure you use your Minneapolis district issued username and uh, password and have everything ready to go. Sometimes though, um, this screen pops up and so you just need to then search for your school. In our case, it would be Lake Harriet Community Upper Campus. And once you log into Clever, this is the first page that you'll see. Um, and then you'll notice that BrainPop is not a core application. So you just have to go into my teacher page and you'll see that BrainPop is right there. Um, so you're gonna click on it. It will open and when you go to BrainPop, this is the first screen you'll see. You're gonna wanna log in. So when you uh, log in, the username is MPLS, all capitals, and school one. So you're gonna wanna enter that information in and log in. Um, you'll know you're logged in correctly if it says MPLS in all caps at the top right. So anytime I do an activity with BrainPop, I'm gonna give you guys uh, a key search term um, and that should take you to the videos that you need. So our current unit is on slavery. So then you would type that, that keyword in here. And when you do, um, it will take you to uh, 15 various topics on slavery that uh, we will explore some of them. So the first one we're gonna go to is that first box uh, right there, and it will bring up a video, and you, you can see that there are many activities to the right of the screen. But the first thing you're always gonna do is you're gonna start by watching the video. And this is a five minute video on, a, on an overview of slavery in the United States. Um, once you've finished watching the video though, the first thing that you're gonna do is, um, well, if I assign it, so sometimes I might just assign the video and we might be doing something, uh, a different activity uh, with um, the content of the video, but um, sometimes I may, I may assign the worksheet that needs to be completed. So this next part of the video talks about how to do that. So you click on worksheet and this is what pops up. Uh, so what's great about these worksheets is you can actually write your responses right on the, um, the fields that they provide. Uh, one thing I want you to notice is uh, when you click on the area that you want to type, it will turn blue. So then you can just start responding. So in this case, um, it talks about how enslaved African Americans sometimes organized revolts against their owners, um, and many times they turn violent. 
So here they're just asking you, you know, were these types of rebellions morally wrong um, because they involved violence? So list your arguments on either side. And so if you feel like it was okay that they used violence during their rebellions, you might say something like it was right for the slaves to rebel against their slave owners, even if it meant using violence because, and then you would respond. You could flip to the other side and say, well, no matter the cause, there's just no place or reason to, to justify violent acts. Enslaved African Americans turning to violent acts against their slave owners was wrong because, and you would have to come up with an argument for either side. Uh, at this point, you would scroll down and at the bottom of the screen, uh, you're going to keep going right there. You'll get to the extended response at the bottom and you can, um, again, it turns blue once you click on the field and then you could, um, here it's asking you to come up with a more complex opinion statement. So do the rebellions fall into a morally great um, area? So many groups throughout history, this is what I put as an example, many groups throughout history and around the world have at one time or another formed rebellions against those in power. Often these rebellions turned violent. But can rebellions that involved violent acts be justified? I believe they can for several reasons. And then um, you would go on and explain, or you may have a different opinion. So now what now? So what happens now? So you've just completed this worksheet. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to make a PDF. Why? Because then that can be turned into Google Classroom. Really printing it out um, won't do anybody any good because it, you still somehow, uh, I mean, technically you could print it out and take a picture of it and do it that way and turn the photo into Google Classroom. But this is a, a more efficient way to do that. So I'm going to just explain these next steps. So even though you you don't really want to print it out, you still have to click on print. So that might seem a little confusing at first, but you click print. Um, this pops up. You're just going to um, um, click on print my work off to the side here I have uh, this that says remember you're not really going to print you're just making a PDF but you're going to click on print um, you can provide uh, your name of uh, the class so Mr. Murphy and I were team M&M you could put that there if you wanted um, and then you hit OK so it's going to come up as if you're about to print it but um, on the screen there's a place a little uh, arrow there where you can click on it and you can come up with more options other than printing so there's just different settings here so you can go through the settings and you scroll through the settings to the, till you get to the bottom and if you look right here it says open PDF and preview that's where we're gonna be able to take this and skip the printing step and make a PDF so you you expand it here by clicking on um, that little window and then when you do it will open up and as you can see right there it says now this is showing it's a PDF so I didn't print anything I just took what was online and I turned it into a PDF so what you could do at this point is you could click on that little arrow there and it'll open up that uh, field where it, it says what's the name of your PDF where do you want it saved so you basically can rename it um, you could rename it if you like uh, and store it on your desktop but the main thing is that this now can be turned you can turn this assignment into Google Classroom because it's a PDF all right so now we're in Google Classroom and we want to turn that brain pop assignment in so we're gonna go to add or create and then you're gonna select file and now this is something you've already created it's sitting on your desktop or wherever you you put it in my case it's on my desktop so then I just grab it and I will just pull it over and then just drop it in and then um, I have to go to the bottom and click upload that processes the assignment and then attaches it uh, to the assignment that I created within Google Classroom it, it um, attaches your work to the assignment and you click turn in and it will remind you are you sure you want to turn it in you do 
and then it thinks for a moment and then it will leave you a message there that says unsubmit which tells you that um, I can see it on my end and the assignments turned in you're all set to go so now we're gonna just talk for a moment about the another activity that you could do with the brain pop videos and that's graphic organizers so it's gonna be exactly the same thing that we did before um, when you click on the fields they turn blue um, you would provide your responses scroll down um, and then when you're done and you've completed everything uh, you can then go through those same steps that I explained before and remember you're not printing them you're just making a PDF and then the final activity that um, I may or may not assign but I might assign are the vocabulary um, terms and it's just doing some research on some key vocabulary related to the videos so if you open those up um, it looks like this you can click on that little flip all and it and it flips over the terms and it provides you a place to define the terms and then use them in a sentence so you would do that for these um, once you fill them in you just scroll to the bottom of the page um, and you fill those in down there and again remember you're not actually printing anything you're gonna make a PDF by clicking on print and going through those steps that I explained before so at this point um, if you have any questions uh, if I'm presenting this in a Google Meet format I can pause here and answer any questions that you have um, but if there's no questions at this time just uh, be safe and be well and look forward to connecting soon